his pancreatic cancer completely disappeared. We're going to find out what controversial treatment saved his life. Could it save maybe your loved ones from that? Coming up next. I said, absolutely, this is what I want to do. Is there a cure for pancreatic cancer? Find out how survivors say alternate treatments are saving lives and why doctors don't buy it. Okay, the news that Patrick Swayze is battling pancreatic cancer was quite a shock to a lot of us. Yeah, the actor is one of about 37,000 Americans diagnosed each year with the disease. Yeah, our next guest is another, and when it came to the treatment, she had to make a radical decision to ignore her doctor's advice. Here's her story. Sarah Ann Cooper felt pretty good at her annual checkup until her doctor changed all that. There's nothing, you know, otherwise, she says, but I need to see you in my office right away. Sarah was about to hear the words anyone would dread. And she says, well, you've got a tumor in your pancreas. Unbelievably, the news got worse. Sarah's tumor was cancerous. To this mother of three, just like the rest of us, Pancreatic cancer sounds more like a death sentence than a diagnosis. Think of the public reaction to the announcement of the news about movie star Patrick Swayze having pancreatic cancer. Back off, war child, seriously. We were all convinced he was going to die the next day. The same thing was true with Sarah. She was told even if patients had the operations, the longest they could expect to live would be... 15 to 18 months if they have the surgery. She says, but um, we have no positive results after that time period. And if they did not have the surgery, six months tops. She realized she had a choice to make about her treatment, so she went away to make one. She took a trip with her husband to get a clear view of life and what was important. And she thought about what made sense to her. So why not live the six months enjoying my life, doing what I wanted to with my children, my gr three grandsons at that time. So Sarah made a brave choice. I decided not to have surgery. And they were totally, you know, <laughs> amazed that I could make that decision. She was going to live her life. I've researched some basic, at that point, alternative medicine. And I would rather try and live my six months and try to do something that people don't know about. Maybe, maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. So Sarah went to see Dr. Nicholas Gonzalez, a specialist in alternative medicine, and he put her on a strict regimen. The protocol consists of the pills that you take, uh, which are about 150 a day. Please welcome Sarah Ann Cooper today. Also her daughter here with us. Laura Wilkes is joining us. Yeah, David Yaffe, uh, also diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. Is here today. We're going to hear David's story in just a second. And Sarah and David's doctor, immunologist Dr. Nicholas Gonzalez, down there on the end. Sarah Ann, good to have you here, by the way. Thank now, you. you started to take those pills, like 170 something pills a wow. day. When mm -hmm. was that? Um, about seven, it was seven years ago, probably right oh. now. Years ago. I thought you had three months to live, Sarah Ann. I'm sorry. I thought you had only three months to live, and now seven did. years mm -hmm. later. Mm -hmm. So we talked a little bit yeah, yeah, on the diet. We get that, but all the supplements and and the detox. Let's talk about the detox just a little bit. Mm -hmm. What? Do, how do you? How are you cleansing your body? Uh, you have uh, a purge, a um, liver cancer, a liver colon, um, and you 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 take different things during a five-day period to cleanse your body, to cleanse your colon, to cleanse your intestines. Doctor, Ooh. including enemas, right? Including the oh, famous coffee enemas. The famous yes. coffee, coffee enemas enema. that we've heard, heard about. Coffee. Laura, you're, as a, the daughter here, you find out that your mother has pancreatic cancer. You All of a sudden, you're hearing she's popping 170 pills a day, having coffee enemas. Were you just going, what the hell are you thinking, woman? <laughs> yeah, I wanted to know how she was going to do it. I mean, how do you take that many pills in a day? That's all I thought she'd be doing all day long. but. She was committed, and I'm proud that she did it because oh, yeah. she's here today. So should be, but, it, but uh, yeah. But at first, you go, my God, you should be listening to your regular doctors, Mom. Oh no, I was 
firmly in the belief that she needed to listen to the doctor. So when she said she wanted to do this inside, I was screaming, please don't do this. But on the outside, we supported her. Because and have the surgery decision. too? Did you want her to have the surgery? I wanted her to do what her doctors had recommended. Mm -hmm. David, Everything. back in January of 2001, your doctors found something, stage four pancreatic cancer. That's right, yeah. And uh, stage four had met metastasized to my liver was all over my when liver. When you hear that, you immediately think, well, it's, you're done. Right, yeah, it's a matter of months when you get that kind of diagnosis. Did you have any chemo? I had about four rounds of chemo, and uh, I was uh, done with that. It had shrunk a little bit, uh, but they said uh, there's really no hope beyond that. So what do you have to lose, right? So your wife, we have two daughters? Right, two daughters. Did they agree with your decision to go f find Dr. Gonzalez? Yes, definitely. They were 13 and 10 at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I would actually have to give the, my mother the credit. She's the one who researched on the internet and going to bookstores and all and found Dr. Gonzalez to convince me to go to him. And you're taking all those supplements? How many pills are you taking? Uh, 190. How do you take all those pills a day? I think a lot of us are wondering that. <laughs> well, it's no big deal. It's, it you is. know what, at, at the beginning it was an adjustment, but now it's it's just part of life, so it's no big deal. Like 20 at a time or something? Yeah, it varies. I mean, take them throughout the day, so you don't even notice them after a while. Okay, now you were told about three months to live. How long ago were you told you had three months to live? It's over seven years ago. Seven years again! Doctor, are you saying that people should not go and, and get the chemo and get the radiation and things like that when they find out they have cancer? No, I never say that. Mm -hmm. We assess each patient individually. Now, for David's case, he actually had the chemo and it didn't really work. He had no other options, so we took him. In Sarah's case, there was some debate as to whether this was really surgically resectable because of the nature of the tumor. And she had refused surgery before she even saw us. She said she'd take our chances. Yeah. So she had very poor prognosis disease, even though it wasn't widely metastatic. So we took them. Now, if we have patients with really localized pancreatic cancer, we'll insist they consider surgery. So we try and assess each patient individually. If there's an orthodox proven therapy that's going to work, we insist they consider that. Well, when we come back, we're going to hear from uh, the other side of doctor yeah. who's skeptical about alternative cancer treatment and also the kinds of things that you use when you use or alternative treatments, focuses on diet and things like that. Let the debate begin. Right back. Congratulations. We're back talking about alternative approaches to treating pancreatic cancer, one of the biggest cancer killers. With us right now are Sarah Ann and David. They're both cancer survivors. They say they would not be alive today if not for alternative treatments. And by the way, David, you cancer free? Yes, I've been cancer free. Wow. And Your doctor is with us too. He's cancer immunologist, Dr. Nicholas Gonzalez. And joining us now is assistant professor of surgery at Mount Sinai Medical School, Dr. Daniel LeBeau. Now, Dr. LeBeau, uh, his cancer is gone, and Sarah Ann's has shrunk dr uh, dramatically. What's wrong with this alternative treatment? I'm not saying there's anything necessarily wrong with alternative treatment, but I think it's important to be responsible about the therapy that exists that we know and has, been, has a proven track record. Certainly pancreas cancer is a very lethal cancer, and traditional means have not, are not the final word, for sure, and I, I applaud Dr. Gonzalez and Sarah Ann, or Sarah Ann, excuse me, <laughs> Sorry, it's my fault. To, uh, to uh, searching out and taking control of their disease and looking at different options. But I think it's important to note that I've cured people with pancreas cancer surgery as well, and it's not to abandon it completely. Is there any way this is just luck? Well, we don't have all the answers in traditional medicine, and we all have stories of miraculous anecdotal cases where patients are cured, and we don't have a reason why. And I think it's wonderful for both these patients what's, what's occurred. But it, it would be uh, some false reassurance if we thought we could cure everyone with that approach. Well, we hear about alternative treatment. Okay, we're hearing about pills, but what, what else are we talking about? We're talking about diet. What else? Our therapy involves three basic components. Each patient gets a diet designed for their particular metabolic needs. Each patient, as you said, takes huge amounts of supplements. We believe the main anti-cancer element are large doses of proteolytic pancreatic enzymes that are derived from a pig source. The first paper showing enzymes have an anti-cancer effect dates back to uh, 1902. The third component, which is the most controversial, are the coffee enemas and other procedures that quite simply, we believe, help the liver and the kidneys work better so they can get rid of waste. it's kind of like a detox sort yeah, of you know, as a thing? tumor breaks down, there's a lot of, technically it's called tumor lysis, there's a lot of debris mm -hmm. from the dead tumor. We believe these procedures help the body mobilize Doctor, and excrete them more quickly. Do you buy that, that tumor debris is being uh, evacuated by a coffee enemas? Well, I think it's more the effect it has on do the systemic you? circulation. I don't know anything about the coffee enemas per se as having that immune effect, but we do know that there are ways to 
augment the immune system response to cancer. Melanoma is a very good example where people have complete regressions yeah. based on the body's vulnerability to fight the cancer. We don't have any great explanation if there's some way that it, it stimulates it. And I, I think the fact that it's being studied in, bigger, in, in, in a bigger trial and in other situations, we'll get some more answers well, for regardless it. Regardless of how it happened, congratulations. Yeah. Best of luck to you. And I, congratulations to you, Dr. Gonzalez. Dr.